Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to our movie club. Today we will speak, we will discuss a movie, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Right? The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Pretty old movie, actually, 2003. And I expected it's much... Um, I, I have never seen it before, so it's my first time. Uh, Leila, did you have a chance to watch it? I know you did. Yeah. Yes, I just watched this time for a change. The first, <laughs> not the first, first and second parts. Yes. You know, almost the end, but I couldn't finish it. But I enjoyed it. <laughs> Sean Connery is very handsome. <laughs> oh, Lee, it is not like that, you know. He gives the impression that you can trust him. <laughs> I don't know. So you you would not trust him, right? Okay. I so trust him. Okay, let's start from the from the story. Leila, please. You want me? Yes. Tell us what happened. Um, when the film starts, there were a lot of you know just uh, there is a, some summary. One sentence <clears throat> attracts my attention a lot: "A new age downs." I like it a lot. So I wrote it on my notice board to tell you the truth. Um, it starts at night, uh, a dark street, and a policeman was wandering around the street, dark street. Then I saw more police guys, and I am, if I'm not wrong, two or three dogs. Suddenly, they just uh, heard some loud noise and a tank just came out of the building, the bricks came down, the building collapsed. They were a bit, I mean, a bit shocked because they weren't expecting this. And uh, I think the tank went into the um, Bank of England and yep. the tank stopped in front of uh, the uh, safe in the bank. And the soldier came out of the tank and he was speaking in German. And uh, sometime later, I thought he was uh, the leader. I'm not sure, Ivan, maybe he was Phantom, right? I'm not sure. He, <clears throat> uh, he, he, weared, he weared, uh, wore a mask, right? Right. And the other day, or something like that, the newspapers um, just mentioned about this event and they say Germany attacked the England bank. And this is the first scene. And then we came to Kenya. If you want, I could continue if you want somebody else. Let's talk about, let's talk about this phantom. Am I right that it's a phantom of the opera? Usually the mask is similar, I, I, right? I think that's where that came from. Yeah, the phantom of the opera. He was ugly and wore a mask or something. Yeah, Leo, do you know this uh, guy, Phantom of the Opera? I know the song. <laughs> the song, okay. So it was a, it was a story. It was a mu musical. Uh, I watched, I watched a musical movie once about this um, guy, but I, I actually don't remember the story. He was a bad guy, right? He was, I guess so. He. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know the story either. I never watched it. <laughs> Gerard, Gerard, Gerard can, can you please teach us about this guy, Phantom of, of the Opera? The Phantom of the Opera. I, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember that there was a young lady and he kidnapped her or something mm -hmm. and then fell in love. But was he a bad guy or good guy? Sorry. It, it, may, it might be a Beauty and the Beast kind of story. I don't know. Should be, yeah. It uh, looks like this. Yeah. Okay, so we went to the Kenya, right? To find a man, a proper man. Vasan, could you please continue? Yes, and uh, there somebody has gone to Africa to um, meet the man, Quatermain, Aaron Quatermain. And initially, he, uh, somebody else claimed to be uh, Quatermain, but later he uh, got, uh, he came to know that, that the real Quatermain is sitting beside the fake person in, in order to avoid uh, attacking or something, to avoid enemies. So um, then he was talking to Quatermain uh, and making 
uh, demanding a mission um, to complete a mission. During that conversation, uh, a group of people came there and asked for Quatermain and killed the fake Quatermain. Um, then there was a fight between them and somehow he, uh, he decided to accept the invitation uh, to proceed with the project. Um, then he had to uh, um, what gather was, the rest of it. What was his motivation? Why he accepted the offer? Mm, I don't know. I think he it's for the England or something. Yeah, for okay, patriotism, think, patriotism, right? Patriotism. Patriotism. <laughs> yeah, because he loved things. How would you uh, describe this man, Quatermain? Who is he? What is his like? Hmm. Yes, he is a sharp shooter. He is very, uh, he must be a very um, talented shooter in his uh, young age, and he is still a sharp shooter, but he needs his glasses because, in order to, uh, how to say that, uh, due to his old age, he needs that. And he still manages to shot any, any target from the distance. Impossible distance. It is that. Yeah. And before before this movie, have you ever heard about Quaterman? No. Quaterman, no? no. So it's not a famous uh, character. Jacques, mm-hmm. did you hear about Quaterman? Yeah. Yeah. So. He's a he's the protagonist of the the minds of the King Salomons. Mm-hmm. And it's this book is a story and it's in movies and in famous book. I, see, I, I, see. I had heard the name before, and I know about the minds of King Solomon, but I never read any of the old stories. The name mm-hmm. sounded familiar when I mm-hmm. saw it in this movie. So it was a totally new for me. So I never. Leila, did you know about Quatermain? No, my dear friend, it was totally new for me too. Yeah, so some local stories, let's say. <laughs> okay, so they. Um, what's the what's the name for this? Um, uh, if I forgot, uh, they hire, they probably, can we say hire Quaterman for a mission, right? So yeah, he, he arrived to, I don't know, to the secret mission, something, cabinet to get an instruction, right? Jacques, would you continue from this uh, moment? He arrived for instruction to the, his boss, to his new, new boss. M. M, yeah. yeah. In London. Uh, he, M explains... Waterman, mm, the reason of, uh, of enrolling him, he wants to have a group of um, like superheroes or by gentlemen with the special powers. One of them is Captain Nemo, you know, the captain of the Nautilus. The other is um, Mina Harker. So it's a, a scientist vampire that was beaten by Dracula. Or that the Invisible Man, Skinner, and I don't know who more. Oh, they, they enroll also Mr. Hyde, well, Dr. Jekyll. Dr. Jekyll, thanks to a, thanks to a portion, uh, he can be Mr. Hyde, who is a very strong. Mm-hmm. But they, 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 um, they didn't hire him. They like forced him like, to join. Yeah, forced him, captured him, and then <laughs> give him the chance to be... Free, mm-hmm. indulge. Yeah. So, uh, what, what do you think about this, Mister M? So it's from James Bond movie, right? Yeah, the like name. The, yeah, mm-hmm. the name. But it, it was a missus usually, right? In, in James Bond. No, in the original movies, M was a man. It stood for mother, which was a code word for the the top guy. Uh, and so he had M was his boss and Q was his uh, gadget supplier. <laughs> I see. Well, do you remember the characters of the movie? Who is your favorite one? Who is the best one? Dr. Hyde. Who? Dr. Hyde. Dr. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Doctor, he was Dr. Uh, Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And actually, oh, yeah. we, we, <laughs> we did not... Uh, study the story uh, yet with Wawa, so it was some, something new for us. It's like Hulk, right? Incredible yeah. Hulk. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you follow the comic books, there was a scientist named David Banner or Bruce Banner. They changed the name in the movie. 
Uh, and he was a scientist, and he accidentally got a, a radiation dose of gamma rays, and it turned him into the Hulk. Mm -hmm. So he kind of goes back and forth from strong, out-of-control Hulk to mild, timid David Banner. <laughs> So Mr. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, they probably based the Hulk on Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, I suspect. And Sherlock Holmes was probably based on Quatermain. Yeah. Mm, okay. okay. But Sherlock Holmes is pretty old. It was written in old times, I guess. It but, might be but before but Quatermain. I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah. 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 So, uh, but Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde story is very popular. I can see reference yeah. everywhere, but yeah. never, never read it, but references are everywhere. Yeah. Okay, so we have a dream team that they capture. Uh, ah, my question <laughs> to you, Wasans. Wasans, why uh, Captain Nemo has some Indian origin? I don't know, maybe to, uh, to attract uh, international audience or something. It's like casting some Indian guy for the second part movie. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, actually, diversity. I was surprised at that moment. Yeah. <laughs> <Diversity. Yeah. laughs> yeah. Little, do you understand what we speak about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> also, you know, what attracted my attention was also the bad guys, you know, just turned into good guys mm -hmm. in order to save the world. Yeah, and this is yeah. something really important. Yeah. Nice. Well, that really wasn't his goal. Yeah. His goal, no, it was, saving the world wasn't his goal. Conquering the world was yeah. his goal. Yeah, but, you know, M called them and he said, the third world war is going to start. You have to stop it, right, Lee? Yeah, Leila is, uh, Leil is speaking about the initial motivation. It's the beginner. So they, they will like kind of crimes or something, mm -hmm. but if your patria ask you you are going to to, to to protect right right the plot the plot was m's trying to save the world yeah lee um when m wanted them to have a team and just try to save the world did he just um promise something to do for them i don't remember that mm, i think they he did not promise anything. He said, There's a just plot we twist. have to yeah. save the world. There's yeah. a plot have... twist at the end. Okay, all right. Now, now yes. Hyde, yes. to get Hyde to work for him, I think the queen promised Hyde, I guess he was banned from England. Okay. So, M said, if you do this mission for us, we'll pardon you and let you come back to England. Okay, so that, that's that fine. There was some quid pro quo going on. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Lee. My but lifesaver, it's... Lee. <laughs> <laughs> but it's only for one guy, right? The others, the others work it on themselves for their motivation. Yeah. Same What's like else, please? Yeah, uh, they chose Captain Nemo's religion as, as Sikh, not Hindu, I think. The, um, only Sikhs wear such turbans on their uh, head. I and see. The costume is Sikh, and it is one of the minorities in. In the, uh, among the Indian uh, cultures, you know, many cultures. But I think they chose it because they had to project the origin just by the uh, outer look or the, the language, just by the yeah. appearance. They, had, they don't have to tell that he is an Indian. Just by looking at him, you can say that, okay, he is an Indian origin. And the ship's, uh, ship's architecture is also represents some of the uh, or Indian god uh, idols, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the ship has a, a top, uh, a black colors uh, sort of uh, idol on the on the top. That's where uh, Gautamain and his student standing and uh, practicing the targeting and other things. I think they chose it um, just because there are some, some logical mistake when uh, when you think about the religious. Uh, Mm -hmm. Mixing uh, because each one, each one, each one is different. His appearance is Sikh, and the god he uh, worships inside the ship was Kali, which is a different one. Yeah, with the <laughs> uh, six hands and the other. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, everything is different. But yeah, okay, it's that's well, I, I, yeah, I understand your point, but you know, uh, you know, for for us outside India, yeah. 
It's, it's all together, you know, it's like yeah. Russians and Ukrainian mm-hmm. on the West, you know, Belarusian, mm-hmm. Russian, it's all, all the same, they're all Russian, it's all the same for, <laughs> the same for Sikhs and um, whatever, you know, for us, for us it's just India, but it's, it's good, uh, good observation, so. <laughs> okay, so we have a dream team, we have this um, submarine. What about yeah. the, the size of submarine? Vova, did you like, uh, did you like the submarine, how it looks? Yes. Do you like to have a ride in such a submarine? Yes. <laughs> what about to be a captain of a submarine? Yes, I do. <laughs> so, 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 thank you. <laughs> so, so they have a submarine. They they need to they need it because uh, they are in 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 rush, right? They are in, uh, it's some deadline here, but I forgot they need three days. To reach the destination point, and uh, and, th- and what they they went to where to Venice, I guess. Yes, three days, Venice in three days. Yeah, what 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 should happen in three days, Leila? Um, no, I mean, I don't remember the name of the American soldier joined them because Mister. Um, I, I think it was Tom Sawyer, wasn't it? Right, right. With a, with a rifle, yeah. like something, yeah. something was special about his rifle, right? Usually, I can't remember. Yeah, because they, uh, because Quatermain and Tom, they discussed something, and Tom promised uh, another rifle like this to Quatermain. So there was something oh. special, but I did not understand what. Also, you know, this quarter quarter main just teased him about the rifle, you know. You, if you remember, okay. Mm-hmm. So, do you want me to say some things about the uh, submarine? Yeah. yeah, let's continue. Okay. Um, Tom Sawyer uh, didn't believe that they could just arrive in uh, Venice in three days. But Captain Nemo said, wait and see. So, they just started the journey. And during the journey, as Wasan mentioned, we saw the Captain Nemo was just praying and uh, Mr. Jekyll was just making a lot of noise and just he turned into Dr. Hyde again. And uh, I just don't remember a lot about the ship. Well, I remember it was a huge ship, for instance. <laughs> but, but I remember this woman, what was the name? Um, Mina Harker. Lee, I just closed my eyes when he just bit the man's neck. <laughs> mm-hmm. How could she become so merciless? Then when she told her story, I said, okay. In, in the Dracula <laughs> story, the Dracula legend... When Dracula left Romania, Transylvania, and came to England, he saw Mina Harker uh, at a social gathering, and she looked like his long dead wife. So he fell in love with her, and he (laughs) visited her every night and slowly turned her into a vampire. Yeah. So I don't like vampires. In the in the the old novels, she was saved and did not become a vampire. But in this movie, it had a different ending, and she became a vampire. And now vampires are strong and fast and and powerful. So she's not a little little young weak woman anymore. <laughs> yeah, when she licked the blood over her mouth. I was dying. <laughs> yeah. So what what happened in, in in the ship? They have they had some conversations. It was a like plot started to started to, to begin, right? So they they found that there is a tree. How we call it? Tree. 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 Threat. Threat. Yes. Some someone someone is walking uh, against oh, traitor. them. Traitor. traitor. Okay. Yeah. Traitor. There was a traitor. Yeah. Uh-huh. Am I right? What's that? Do you remember? Yeah. Yes, which one? Uh, yeah, what, what, what is happening during the, the, this journey? So they had conversations and share stories, right? 
Yes, but I don't remember that. No, uh, Wasan, Teacher Lee has written. Do you remember Mr. Hyde's theorems? One of her, one of his theorems got lost. Um. Yeah. So uh, uh, there on the on the ship took took place some strange events, uh, right? Some strange. Yeah. Events. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Skinner I, I, yeah. was was being blamed, I think. Do you remember, yes. Wasan? Yes, yes, I remember that uh, his, uh, the doctor's uh, medicine was uh, stolen and each one of their secrets was uh, stolen uh, without them knowing. Uh, so they, they suspected that there was a spy, but they thought it was Skinner because he has, has the ability to hide and uh, sneak, sneak out. Uh, but uh, later they found out they were wrong. So somebody else got their samples and for a different purpose. I think to make uh, weapons. Mm -hmm. so, do, you, do you remember what should happen in, in Venice uh, in three days? Yeah, there was a bomb blast. Uh, there will be a bomb blast and it was a carnival festival. Mm -hmm. um, so people were gathering and in that time, uh, the bad guys decided to ex uh, blast the bomb. Uh, they, so they had to arrive on time and stop the blasting, but they couldn't make it on time. Uh, it already started exploding and it was connected to uh, all the bombs connected together and uh, the buildings were falling like a domino. So uh, in order to stop it, they had to, um, <clears throat> yeah, they had to block the dominoes somewhere else to, mm -hmm. the, um, um, so. You know, you know we, we, we do the same with uh, bonfire in, in wild uh, fires. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when, when we have fires that we cannot, uh, like what, the cannot, cannot switch off, we use a, uh, uh, fire that goes uh, like uh, in the same, in the opposite direction. So mm -hmm. fire, fire, fire. Just remove all the, I don't know, all the materials that, that could uh, fire. <laughs> we have an idiom to fight fire with fire. Yeah, to fight. But... <laughs> it's a kind, kind of the same. Yeah. So what what can what can we say about Venice more, Gerard? What we miss about this action? <laughs> There was a carnival party, mm -hmm. the most important party in the year in Venice. Mm -hmm. And they stopped the explosions by shooting a missile. And Tom Sawyer was a, was a decoy with the, the car. Uh, I remember there were uh, like hundreds of these uh, strange agents on the roof, right? Mm -hmm. With rifles, so, so many. Oh, wow. And Mina oh. killed a lot of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she became to to what? To vampire, like another disgust. I don't know how, how we name it. A lot of bats around her. Yeah. And they, they yeah. attacked soldiers, right? Yeah. Usually? Uh, in Venice, what happened was the guy planted an explosion that was going to blow up one building and it would fall against the next building and blow it up and it would fall against the next building and blow it up and it would just topple all of Venice. So they decided if they could blow up a building in the middle, kind of like Yvonne's fire and fire, a fire barrier, if they blow up a building in the middle, then when the domino effect gets there, it'll stop because there's nothing there to mm -hmm. continue the domino effect. But he can't aim his missile. Nemo can't aim the missile without some kind of a, a beacon to tell it where to go, kind of like heat seeking missile. So the car has a beacon in it to, so the missile can home in on the car. So they have to get the car to the building they want to destroy, and then the missile will go to the car and blow up that one building. So the mission was to get that car there to stop the destruction before it was too late. And along the way, people were jumping out of the car to fight the bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> to show their super abilities. That's and once the car got ability. there, I guess the guy shot a flare telling Nemo, fire the missile. <laughs> so, 
So yeah, so it was teamwork. Yeah, it was teamwork. Teamwork. Yeah. But one was missing, uh, if if I'm right. Masans, please. No, yes, it's possible that uh, when the car reaches the exact point, there was a little space between those blocks, you know. So that mm -hmm. makes sense. Even if it blows up, the building would not fall on the adjacent one. So there is no such building nearer to that. So he decided that place to uh, shut the flare. Okay. Yeah, I see. Yeah, it was it was exactly it wasn't beacon. It was a rocket launcher or something with a red uh, rocket. It's exactly okay, rocket launcher. Okay. Yeah, rocket launcher. What's else? What is what is special about Venice? What makes this town so you know famous in the world? It's a floating city, right? Uh, on the on the water. So, um, Leila, have you been there? I was going to. <laughs> not, <laughs> because not of this you know virus i could we couldn't go we had to cancel it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's well, good to go one time <laughs> yeah yeah i know lee one time but was it was it built was it built like a floating uh city or it something happened after what do you think no f my son told me that it is a city full of uh, streets and uh, these streets are full of water you know you have to travel by special canoes mm -hmm. and uh, the canoes I mean, are for tourists yeah you, they got bridges you can walk around they got bridges over the water <laughs> are there taxis there lee uh you don't need taxis i don't think because it's the the, the roads are water Okay. Uh, it's it's a lot. It's a walking city, really. I mean, there's sidewalks and bridges over the water, so you can walk everywhere. The okay. boats that go down the water that's for tourists. Okay. They call them gondolas. Yeah. Oh, solo mio! And the, the guy sings with sings for you sometimes. <laughs> what else, please? Yeah, uh, yeah. What I thought was, uh, it must be. A normal city is just like ours. Uh, it was built on the normal land, but later the water would have uh, flowed into uh, the city because uh, somewhere I read that due to the global warming, Venice uh, water level will rise uh, within mm -hmm. uh, in upcoming years. So I think it is located nearby the sea. So. It must be on normal land, and the water may may have come later. It might have come later. They predict that'll probably be the first city to go underwater when the ocean rises. Right. <laughs> so if you want to visit it, it it's time, right? Go go <laughs> now. <laughs> I will visit Spain first. Didn't they have some kind of flooding there about a year ago, where yes. the water level went up high yes. for some reason? Mm -hmm. Yes, you're right. Yes, uh, now I remember it was some incident. They have to cancel something. A lot what? of restaurants and yeah. shops, you know, had <clears throat> just been damaged a lot. So, I, I think the walk-in square, the big square where you can walk, I think was like two feet of water or something. Mm. <laughs> right. St. <San> Marcos. <laughs> mm. what, is, what, what strikes me uh, that... Uh, uh, this bad guy who tried to blast or fire up the city choose the one city in the water. You know, if I if I want something uh, to make fire in it, I I I, I seek a dry place. Not a, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why, why place Venice? With a, with a lot of water. It's just a tourist place, is all it is. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. Well, so uh, it's I'm... it's not nothing important, right? In general. So. Yeah. yeah. What's that? That's not why I read that. Uh, in November 2019, there was a news article that it says 70% of Venice is now submerged and it's oh. disturbing. Mm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So time time is counting, you know. <laughs> you, you have to go now if you want to see something. <laughs> you <laughs> go there, Ivan, and tell us it is safe, then we will come. <laughs> okay. Okay. I will tell you. I will tell you. If, if, if borders will be open. You know, sure. oh, yeah. Okay. So... Um, what, what they did uh, after the Venice? 
So what they what they learned and what they did. Do you remember? What they did at the Venice, in, um, they discovered that Dorian Gray was the traitor, escaped mm -hmm. with a small submarine, but he planted some bombs inside the Nautilus. And they avoided uh, the, 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 those bombs did some harm, but uh, the Dr. Mr. Hyde stopped stopped the, the explosions by by uh, you know pushing a lever, pulling yeah. up, pulling up or pulling in. Okay, and then when they had to go to the Arctic, the North mm -hmm. Pole, I think is it was it the North Pole. I, I'm not sure, but an Arctic place, so a lot of snow, place. very, very cold. Yeah, yeah it was a, okay. What I, I was impressed and uh, impressed uh, with the scene of scene of, uh, uh, you know, of uh, saving of Nautilus by by pulling the uh, leverage. leverage, leverage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, actually, is it possible in every submarine you just pull the leverage and it uh, goes up? <laughs> uh, in our submarines, we have a button. We hit a button. And uh, emergency air <laughs> makes it buoy to the surface quickly. Yeah. It was you may pretty find it, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Just go you on. may find it interesting that America's first nuclear submarine was named the Nautilus. <laughs> okay. <Good>. So, <laughs> so we yeah, like we why. like history. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 these buttons are in every section, right? In every section. No, only in one place. In only one in place? the control room. I see. Okay, now it makes sense. So this uh, Hulk uh, had to go there because it was one place and it was hard to reach. So his okay. super abilities saved uh, the boat. Uh, okay, yeah, we we have them in an easy place where everyone's always there. But in the submarine, they had it back in the back somewhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But this, this submarine, it's like a, it's enormous, like a, I don't know what to compare, wow. like an aircraft or something. Yeah, so wow. Something big. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember. Okay. Okay. So they went to Arctic, uh, Arctic, some territory, and they found a castle <laughs> or something where the bad guys doing the the bad things. Leila, have you watched this moment? <laughs> Ivan, I am I am under the bed now because I haven't watched it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So what uh, happened? By basically, that they found the place where the Mr. M Moriarty, as we know now, uh, Moriarty is from uh, Sherlock Holmes movie, and uh, Dorian Gray, the traitor. They are together in this castle, and they have all the samples of blood and DNA and everything of these superheroes and then they trying to create uh, own army of super uh, heroes something like this and also there are many some metallurgy metallurgy they are making army of metal I don't know what soldiers or something and they go into invite the yours I guess I, I'm not sure so <laughs> so they they have to stop it somehow what else what how how is it stop it? How what they did? Uh, yeah, they sneaked into the um, cattle and they started to fight and they made chaos uh, among them. And during that fight, uh, one guy drank the medicine that mm -hmm. could make him uh, become a monster. And he became a monster. He was more huge, okay, uh, much more huge than uh, doc the doctor. And the doctor had to fight ferociously with him and um, Captain Nemo had to help him. Uh, and Mina uh, went there. Uh, she helped, I think she, she was not in the scene, is that right? Inside the castle. I, I, I don't think I, I think it was a teamwork. All of them were there, but in different places. Uh, yes, yes. And Mina was to take the revenge, to avenge the uh, yeah, supported yes. guy, you know. Yes. Um, I forgot the name. Dorian Gray. Yeah, Gray, yeah. 
she was there and everybody was on their own mission and um, finally they managed to pull the uh, first piece of the domino i think so there was a bomb blast and skinner um, took the part of uh, placing bombs everywhere uh, and when it did when it detonates uh, the whole castle was collapsed and, yeah. it was funny with skinner so mm-hmm. how they found skinner because the snow in this arctic place <laughs> was like uh, making marks or, or <laughs> in the in the place where skinner stand right mm-hmm. and <laughs> he to be invisible he had to be naked right and it was pretty cold in the <laughs> 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 it, it, was, it was funny, right? So, Leila, why do you think uh, uh, this uh, lady wanted to make revenge with this guy? So it was personal, right? Because I thought um, at the beginning of the film, they were talking about a kind of relationship between these two. I'm not sure, you know, but even um, on the submarine, Dorian tried to, you know, just get close to her. And she objected to this. <laughs> I'm not sure. I see. Uh, so the good guys won the battle, right? What 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 we missed? What what important we missed? So we we missed uh, the, the the swing in the plot when they like uh, all of a sudden they found that they they were working for a bad guy, not for saving the yours or something. But it was one moment right right in the movie so they 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 learned that the m was a bad guy not a, a great britain minister or something but a moriarty a king of crimes that's what well, that's one swing in the movie uh, the rest is pretty forward i guess i don't remember what we missed Whoa, did we forget something did we forget something something important no <laughs> okay i think we did <laughs> what happened to Waterman? <laughs> uh, ah, yes, mystery ending. <laughs> yeah. He was so brave, Leila, because uh, he was sure that Africa will never let him die. Whatever, yeah. it, whatever it means, I don't know. Don't ask me. <laughs> so, what happened to him at the end, Ivan? Uh, he got killed. Right? <laughs> He got killed and he was buried uh, in, 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 in Africa. Africa. In Africa. Whoa, whoa, what the, happened uh, after? What? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Let me ask whoa. Whoa, what happened with them, Quatermain in Africa? Some deep. It was a, like a some magician or something like some, some voodoo man, a shaman. I don't know what 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 we use for, for the name voodoo, right? We call them witch doctors. <laughs> witch doctors. <laughs> we have a song about a witch doctor. Okay. <laughs> so, well, what do you think? Uh, did he revive um, Quatermain? Was Quatermain? Yes. yes. So Quatermain was alive again. Yes. But we did not see it, right? Or we see. I, I don't remember. Or we saw. Yeah, Jart, did we see? Did we see him? No, we didn't see that. But one thing about Quaterman is he he explained the history of uh, his son. When his son was young, well, or adult, they went on a mission and his son died. Yeah. So yeah. he took Tom Sawyer like whom he was his son, and at the end, uh, he died protecting Tom Sawyer. Mm-hmm. It was like a story. What happened? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, at the beginning of the movie, when he was living in Africa in Kenya, mm-hmm. his African friend said something about, uh, "You know, Africa will not let you die, my dear friend," which, mm-hmm. which kind of portended the end. When he did die, that initial statement at the beginning, some witch doctor didn't want to let Quatermain die because his spirit was the spirit of Africa or something like that. So at the end, the witch doctor did some voodoo and lightning hit the grave of Quatermain. So the implication is 
that the African voodoo brought him back to life because he was the the spirit of Africa. I see. I see. Good. I am happy. <laughs> so a happy ending, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's So also, so uh, okay, in this please. movie, the basic plot was the bad guy wanted to make a super army of bad guys. So he needed to get all the good guys together so he could steal all of their DNA to make his super army. Wow. Now, this idea has been used before. I think one of the Avenger movies. Could be. Could be. They, a bad guy got DNA from a bunch of Avengers and made a super villain. They had all their powers. <laughs> So they had to all work together as a team to beat this one guy that had all of their powers. I, I seem to remember that somewhere. So it's a, a repeat, repeated idea or plot. Mm. And Iron Man, same thing. Iron Man invented the Iron Man suit, and then the bad guys invented a bigger Iron Man suit, and then many Iron Men, and, you know, it's the same idea. <laughs> Fight fire with fire. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> but but I, I don't remember, Gerard, maybe you remember how this Hulk, or how Mr. Hyde, managed to fight with a bigger Hulk. So how he defeated him? He, uh, he was stuck in, you know, in, a, in a building because there was an explosion and then at the end the building collapsed over him. Okay. So he was smaller but smarter, right? Yeah. <laughs> he used to be Okay, what sounds? Would you like? Yeah, yeah. He knows the uh, capacity of his medicine, so it will drain the energy so fast because he has he had drunk uh, the whole bottle of that medicine. So uh, he all he wanted to do was just making him uh, tired. That, I that's see. how he. I see. Okay, we have a few questions on our Padlet. So one of them, uh, why did the tiger go back without attacking Ellen? And we, Vova, do you remember the scene with the tiger? Tiger in Arctic and uh, a, a guy with a gun. So why tiger did not attack the guy? I don't know. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> was, was he scared or something? I don't know. Leila, what do you think? Have you seen this moment? I haven't, but you told me some things. Maybe it is because the tiger felt the spirit of Africa. <laughs> spirit of great hunter of the, of the whole world. <laughs> right. Right. I smell my parents died there or something. Okay. Uh, so, according to uh, the in in uh, before the movie start before our club started i put a little excerpt in there that talked about quartermain or yeah. maybe it's in the synopsis it was in the synopsis but quartermain used to be a great hunter he went out and killed animals you know to put the trophy on the wall and to become famous i killed the great white tiger i killed the great elephant you know and he got glory from killing animals and as he got older he realized that he was killing noble creatures and he mm -hmm. quit being a great hunter and he went to Africa to kind of retire. Mm -hmm. So I think that's when he became the spirit of Africa. He went from, you know, killing animals for no reason or for pleasure to respecting them and no longer killing them. And I think the tiger recognized the new quartermain who respected all life in Africa, and, and that's why it didn't kill him or didn't attack him. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting how mo moral uh, change with time in, in, exactly. in humankind, right? Exactly. Now, the, nowadays, we cannot imagine uh, a hunter, a great hunter, like a positive hero, right? He will be, <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> he will be blamed on, on every corner. He will be blamed. Yeah. How dare you? How dare you to kill animals? But at that time, he was a like a noble guy and we've had two or three incidents in the news one was a dentist who killed uh a Li tiger a lion li lion okay an old lion and hmm. and oh the the outward was horrible the outrage was horrible you know and and he lost his business and everything and then later another guy i don't know if it was trump's son or some famous person 
killed another animal that was also beloved. And yeah, you can't kill animals these days. The the animal rights people will just burn your house down. But the, those animals were protected, special animals, not uh, you know. Yeah, endangered species or something, you know, mm -hmm. and and they they pay somebody to have the opportunity to hunt them illegally, just you know. So well, how stupid of them, you know, because <laughs> the people recognize the, the picture that this animal is protected. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, in, in Russia, you still can hunt uh, wolves or something. So it's uh, moreover, government will pay you for that. If you will hunt wolves, <laughs> government pay you for that because you're doing an uh, important mission. Because during yeah. the winter, they can attack people or something. <laughs> but you cannot hunt some, some species. For instance, for bears, you need a special license and a lot of paperwork. Uh, yeah, what else? Yes, and in India, such endangered species were announced as the national animals. You know, the national animal is tiger, the national bird is peacock. So that's how we uh, protect them. Yeah. Indirectly, yeah, indirectly telling the people that you should not kill them. You know, they are endangered species. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, another question Which superpower would you like to get among this? Well, choose one. What, what would you like? To be invisible or to be Mr. Yes, Trump? yes, to be invisible. <laughs> I Why? like it. But you must be naked. <laughs> <laughs> but, right. but nobody, it's... nobody can see. You know? <laughs> yes, but you have a problem. You have a, you know, a disease or something or an injury. You can, it's hard to heal. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I will learn what I have to learn and come mm -hmm. home and try to be normal again. <laughs> Vova, what, 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 what would you like to choose from these super abilities? Which one? Do you want to be a great hunter or... Invisible. <laughs> Invisible, <okay. laughs> Hello, and... yes. Okay, I, I should ask you where you want to sneak invisibly. To, to the school or outside of the school? Why do we want to be invisible? Bless you. Excuse me. Bless you. Oh, oh don't see. Nobody can see you, right? Yes. And you, and you, and you want to do something that uh, better people would not see, right? Yes. <laughs> Steal cookies in the shop, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, what else? What, what would you choose? Uh, yes, uh, the invisible man seems very interesting to me. The concept is very interesting, but it also has difficulties because you cannot hide your presence, you know, just like the creaking floors or the dust when you uh, walk on or something. So you cannot escape from the... Uh, yeah. I understand what you're talking about. So you're invisible, but you, for instance, cannot cross the border, you know, because it's well protected. So, yeah. And it's easy to find you by with bucket with water, I don't know, or something. Right? So, but, but no one's going to be looking for you because no one uh, expects yeah. an invisible man. So as long yeah. as you're careful, no one would notice, you know. Uh, you follow somebody in through a security door, you just go right behind them and nobody would notice. Don't Thank you, Lee. I not. feel received. <laughs> <laughs> but Gerard has a, has a valid point. So dogs, infrared uh, <laughs> cameras, everything, you know, rentgen cameras. Cameras uh, can't detect me. Come on, Gerard. <laughs> <laughs> but they're infrared. Are you going to leave uh, so you will be warm, right? If you've watched the Harry Potter movies, Harry <laughs> Potter had the cloak of invisibility. And he could cover his body with the cloak and be invisible, but they could still see his footprints in the snow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, let's make some slides before it's too late. Another masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> so, whoa, what could what could you find uh, there on the picture? Tell us. Keys. Uh, the vampire, okay. Tell us. Mm. Mr. Hyde. Uh, yes, Mr. Hyde. And I can see two rifles, two guns, right? That's and... Quartermain's, Quartermain's hunting. Yeah. And this, uh, this border of 
painting. What does it symbol for? I don't know. I don't know what that is. On oh, that the painting of the guy. No? Um, when he saw the painting. Ah, Dorian Gray. Dorian Gray. Uh, Gray. Uh, photography, right? Dorian Gray's picture. Picture, right? Photo. So he portrait. So Dorian mm -hmm. Gray. Dorian Gray. He was always young, but his picture getting was getting old. So that's yes. the story. There's a story mm -hmm. about him. Very good. Oh, very good. Yeah. Uh, and okay, that's all. I think. Mm. Wow. Actually, I don't remember this one. Oh, Looks could... like the Phantom. Yeah. Right. Oh, could you start this? <laughs> what is on this picture? <laughs> it, it, the, the is, the is, uh, um, yes, Mr. M. Yeah. it's Mr. M, but we, we don't know at this moment, right? At that moment, he was a Mr. X, let's say, somebody unknown with a, with a mask, right? And uh, what? <laughs> Those are called airships. Remember the Hindenburg? Yeah. Huge the one, Hindenburg right? was the first airship, and to make it float, they put hydrogen gas inside the balloon. Mm -hmm. Well, hydrogen's flammable and explosive. <laughs> so it looks like someone here created a bunch of airships all filled with hydrogen. It's so like someone blew up one of them and the fire just kept them all blowing up <laughs> it looks like a dog for them or garage how we call it for airplanes? hangar hangar okay hangar for them and this pipe on the left looks like a ah it's a tank probably it's a, probably this uh, gun like pipe maybe i'm not sure i can't say the scientists say there are a lot of Water, what? Water? Water, what? <laughs> I, I don't. Uh, I think those are sparks. I think those are fire sparks. Sparks of fire. Well, well, s s say in Russian. What, what, what do you want to say? Water, what? Ah, yes. It, it's a hy hydrogen. Hydrogen. Well, hydrogen. Hydrogen in Russian. Yeah, well, we're trying to say hydrogen, but in Russian. Yeah, so hydrogen is a side aircraft, so this, and it's flammable. It can ignite, in, it can blast in one, one second, right? Yeah. All time. Yeah. And guys has kind of uh, metal metal plates on his chest and stomach just to protect, I guess, like a yeah. armor, armor, exactly armor. Okay, let's go further. What else would you like to describe this one? Yeah, this is where the bad guys are seeking Quatermain to kill. But as usual, his body double or something like that, a fake Quatermain claimed that he was the Quatermain. So without asking any further questions, they just shot him. And then the fight began. And we can see the columns inside the building and it i think it they're made of uh, wood or something mm, and tables and chairs with the hats on the uh, table can, can, can you see on the wolves there are uh, skulls of animals mm, yes yes on the one yeah. yeah so it's kind of a like a hunter house or how we call this mm -hmm. hunter like an, house. yeah an antelope trophy maybe mm -hmm. so Really, I don't understand why someone should say that he is Quatermain. <laughs> I think so Quatermain, like a... yeah, he was famous, and people kept mm -hmm. seeking him out to, you know, enter for interviews or, you know, to go take him on a great hunt, you know, as a guide and train him how to hunt animals. So he wanted to hide from publicity. So I think his friends knew mm -hmm. this, so they would always volunteer to say they were Quatermain, so that he was his privacy mm -hmm. was protected. But in this case, well, it went bad. It's, 
Yeah, it's, it's a good idea, but if someone, you know, point a gun to my head and say, are you a Mr. Jones? I would say, <laughs> no, I don't know who is Mr. Jones. <laughs> when, when normally people wanted him because he was famous, this was the first time somebody wanted to kill him. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Okay, anything else? There? Mm-hmm. Not, not much, right? There. Yeah. Mm. They have jackets, hats, and uh, what else? Okay, let's let's go there. Leila, could you please describe this one? Okay. Um, this could be. You said that a kind of hunters' club or something like that. For me, yeah. it was a kind of gentleman's club that men gathered together, and. It was an, there was an explosion, right, in this place, and uh, everybody was almost out, if I'm not wrong, and African people were co- surprised, um, and uh, Mr. Guatermain uh, was holding a rifle, and the man on the right was uh, the guy who came to Kenya in order to persuade Mr. Guatermain to <clears throat> serve uh, England. I can see a big fire, flames, and uh, African people um, just looking at them, surprisingly. A very simple village, that's all. Remember, Trump referred to Africa as a bunch of shithole countries. Right. Here, here the ground is all dirt. This is a shithole country. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing modern. <laughs> Nothing modern, yeah. They, their dresses look like traditional African dresses, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. A, lo- a long time ago, yeah. yeah. The guy has an, an armor. And actually, I remember that this guy, he took poison uh, just to not to tell with Quatermain. Yes, oh. you're right. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I oh, remember. What a discipline, right? <laughs> and what could happen, right? With, uh, with this talk, I guess. Okay, let's go. Wawa, could you please describe this one? What can you see? Wawa, do you hear? This is... Mm. Mr. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. Capitan Nero. Yeah. Elon Quatermain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They seems to be in a library, right? A lot of books, or like a kind of I don't know, ancient working cabinet or something, meeting room maybe because of this table. Should... Look at the ceiling, Elon. Yeah, Sailing tells me that it should be in like in the basement or something, or secret room, I, w- I would say. Usually we have such such type of sailing things in a uh, basement, underground. Really? I don't know it. Because of physics. <laughs> okay, thank you, my dear friend. It looks kind <laughs> of Italian, you know, the Sistine Chapel, the ceiling has all the paintings on the ceiling, so it has kind of an Italian artwork decor mm-hmm. maybe could be yeah and beard of captain name is pretty huge i would say so what's out six has a turban right and this uh, bird or this shave it no no they don't shave it they grow it as long as it, and if, if they feel it they can how to say that twist it something like that mm-hmm. they have yes. a, I cover something like that, you know. Ah, they cover it. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, some religions require that you have a beard. Yeah. The Amish, mm-hmm. the six, the six have that beard. Every man has that beard. I think it's a <laughs> religious symbol. Yeah. Uh, there was an interesting theory that when their uh, the founder of that religion uh, founded this, and he declared that. He will not shave his beard and, and he will not shave his uh, hair until he kills someone, something like that, yeah, or to protect the race or something. 
so that's why their uh, the Sikhs don't shave off their hair and fur, and they always carry a sword. Mm-hmm. It's a tradition. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, funny. Uh, okay, another meeting, I guess. Okay, let's skip this one for, for this one. Uh, what else? Who do you like? Yes, and um, yeah, this is Dr. Hyde. And after he was captured by Quatermain, um, he was tied inside the um, submarine. And the, um, the workers are trying to uh, make him calm, are trying to get him under control by um, how to say that, to stabbing him with that long. Uh, Yeah, they, they really don't stop him, right? They like yeah, just, just intimidating something like yeah, that. Yeah, making <laughs> menace or danger or something. Keep him back. <laughs> Stay back. <laughs> <laughs> And it's um, interesting that his pant remains the same. You know? Only the <laughs> yeah. shirt tear tore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I can see some fish uh, hanging there, right? Yeah. And, and it looks like a huge fridge to me. I can see these pipes on the right. It's probably, I don't know, for gas, for Freon, or what we use in fridges. Fre- Freon, yeah, yeah. Probably. And everywhere is this uh, white sink. How we call it? White Frost. Frost, yeah, frost. Exactly. So it looks like a big fridge with some fish. If I were a captain of submarine, I would never put fish in my fridge. I would put meat because I can feed and <laughs> can, can get fish from outside. <laughs> right. Well, if he stays out on the ocean all the time, that's all he's got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would miss uh, beef and apples and something else, but not fish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so he what, has... Mm-hmm. Uh, what is that... Uh... The weapon, the name of the weapon. Uh, I would just call them spears or pikes. Okay. Yeah, and we can see a chain, right? And how we call it, handcuffs? Yeah. In, th- in this case, I'd call them manacles. Manacles, manacles. Handcuffs are Attached to together. Each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Manacles can be separate with a chain between them. I see. So he's in manacles. Yeah. Okay, let's go further. Leila, would you like to tell us what is happening on? Um, that was the part that I watched. They were on the submarine and uh, okay. I think Mr. Kotramain is trying to persuade him to shoot using his way because uh some soldier was is good at shooting but because um he is from america mr quarter main is from england and so he is saying that you americans shoot very quick quickly now very uh, how could you say that lee non-stop Very fast, I guess. Continuously, I guess. Continuously. You thank you, yeah. my dear friend. We tend to jerk. Yeah, we jerk yeah. the trigger. And when you jerk the trigger, the barrel moves and you can't hit very accurately. So he's yeah. training the guy how to aim and pull the trigger slow. <laughs> yeah, he was telling him, be calm, please. Be calm, please. If I were there, I would be like Tom Sovia. I couldn't be calm. No, so he has two, uh, has rifle and two guns and knife and something else. So uh, probably I, I read uh, the book uh, <laughs> very fast, but I don't remember that Tom Sawyer became a hunter or terrorist or something. Fun. What happened to Tom <laughs> yeah, right. at the end of the movie? Um, he was alive, he was, was all right, and he shoots the important uh, target at the, at, the, at the end. Yeah, so he used this training at the end of the movie to uh, do a, do something good, yeah. Okay. So it was kind of important for the story. So, so he's trainable. 
at least. Yeah. Yeah, this episode with Shiva, right? We all okay. How we call it? This goddess? This Kali. Yeah, Kali. 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 Oh, so tell us, some, tell us something about this goddess. Uh, it, it's a goddess of death. And uh, I think uh, that uh, at that time, the ancient people the present, created this god to protect them from the enemy. You know, that's why the goddess has so many hands and words and all the weapons on his uh, on her hand and you, you can see that a dead man on the bottom under her feet you know yeah. she places one feet on the dead uh, man he is the devil you know? she fights with him and finally he uh, she uh, managed to how to say that to defeat him so yeah. after the defeat uh, she places her uh, leg on him so it is a symbolic representation and she always Uh, seems to be angry her, if you look at the face she <laughs> let that her tongue out and it was so red and some like something like that uh, the vampire's mouth you know always the blood uh, uh, dripping uh, 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 mouth you know mm-hmm. so it, it represents that she's so angry and that anger is only for the enemy you know to it will protect the uh, innocent from the was sound who is praying at the scene nemo yeah captain nemo yeah okay is that a head that she's holding or he's holding is that the dead guy's head yes yeah she okay. uh she had to say, but it doesn't look like a head but usually she has mm-hmm. yeah it's it's kind of looks like a head but <laughs> from from another point i would say looks too skinny yeah too skinny <laughs> So yeah. she has a she has shield she has uh, some knives and how we call triangle how we call Tried, trident 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 and s- ah, yeah, it's, it's a head yeah, yeah the yeah, yeah, yeah there was a uh, vessel under the head you know it yeah. uh, holds the blood the dripping blood ah okay okay, <laughs> okay. so nice one okay uh, one with scar Wow, so Vova, please. Do you remember no, this this scene? Yes. Yeah. So what what is this? What is is underwater underwater boat. Yeah, boat underwater a submarine, another small submarine. I would call it in Russian we call it a batiskaf, literally. Is it correct? Yeah, ba- ba- yeah, bathy scaf, I think. I forget how to pronounce it. Yeah, we call yeah. so uh, when it's a, it. when when it's a big thing like submarine, you can walk inside, you can change your place inside. We call it submarine. When it's so small that you probably sit in one place and manage it, we call it party scarf or something. Yeah, or, Ivan, or yeah. Ivan, what is it for? Uh, I don't know. Actually, we use them for science mostly. So you know, military has submarines. So scientists they have the body scuffs to go down and up. The small oh. ones can go very, very deep, Layla. So they're used when you got to go down two, three, four thousand feet. But yeah. being small, they can be made strong, so the sea pressure won't crush them. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they use those when they go. very deep in the ocean to explore you know mysterious life down at the bottom mm-hmm. <laughs> lee have you ever experienced something like that no i've never been in a, a small deep submersible mm-hmm. okay what well, else what 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 is on the walls there on the on the board is it some decoration you talk about this that it's indian style or not what else you muted we cannot hear you Yeah, Ivan, what is the wall? I mean, on the on the wall of submarine, there is some decorations, and Vasans told us that it has a, okay. Indian style, right? Yeah. On the style. left, ah, yeah, 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 I saw. I could see the uh, some idols, uh, sort of statues from the Indian uh, goddesses. Uh, not from this angle, but uh, mm-hmm. when looking at the entire uh, ship's architecture, we could see a lot of such uh, sculptures. On I see. I see. Okay, let's find something with many details, maybe. Uh, Leila, do you remember this moment? 
I haven't watched this scene, my friend. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. So she was stabbed by him in the chest, you know, with, with this knife. But somehow she, yeah, she survived or not? I don't remember. Do you remember? Yes, she survived. Uh, she pretended to be dead, but she's a vampire, so she could come mm-hmm. back from the dead. And she again stabbed him. Um, and into his back? Say that, yeah. Into his back, right? Yeah, no, uh, on his uh, stomach. And she pushed him uh, against the wall. So the sword uh, stick against the wall. So he mm-hmm. couldn't move. It's just like a pinning himself against the wall. <laughs> uh, well, what do you think about this bedroom? Pretty positive, right? No. <laughs> It's scary. <laughs> the colors and everything, you know. I, I can't stand being there, believe me. <laughs> but uh, uh, this black uh, cutons, right? <laughs> they, they, they look very intimidating. And this uh, no, 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 no way. So scary. So gloomy. Thank you, Ron. No way. Okay. Yeah. Not, not your cup of tea. Ah, okay. This <laughs> Stabbed to, to, he was attached to the to the wall, right? I'm I'm trying to <laughs> to say it in in another way. So he was like we would say he's pinned. Pinned, yeah, yeah. So we have small uh, devices for paper, right? To pin paper somewhere. And we actually pin bugs. If you've ever seen an insect exhibit, they mm-hmm. use little straight pins to pin the bugs <laughs> where they don't move. So he was pinned. Nice. Uh, okay, this mask. Actually, don't remember. Okay, let's find some. Uh, which one? <laughs> that looks like uh, the grave, and that's the guy bringing him back to life. I don't know. <laughs> well, what was your showing to us? Tell us. Uh, what, what, what is this? It's a, the ritual? Ritual, yeah. <laughs> ritual? Yes. So uh, this voodoo, this witch, uh, how we call it, witch doctor, was uh, closing his eyes, right? Mm. Or, what, was he singing something? Yes. Do, do you remember what or not? Do you remember what he was singing? Mm. I guess I, I guess something unspeakable, something you know, some just just tunes, just no how we call it, I don't know, just melody, you know, some yeah, some some African melody, I would say. I don't know, can I say African or not? Maybe it belongs to some culture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But usually for me, for, for what is for me is this voodoo cow. For me, it's always uh, drums. So always drums and yeah, and nothing more actually, and tra- drums and voice. <laughs> some melody. So, yeah. Leila, do you know something about voodoo cult? I watched a lot of times, you know, these kind of things on films, but I don't believe these things. To tell you the truth, <laughs> and this black magic, I don't believe it. Yeah, yeah. Nowadays, nowadays, I, I guess it's only for tourists' money. <laughs> I but I just want to ask something, Teacher Lee. You said chanting. Chanting is a way of singing, right? It is, but it's kind of a religious or ritualistic kind of singing. Okay, thank you. Okay. Ivan, uh, when speaking about the instruments, uh, I read that uh, there is a reason behind the, all the instruments uh, origin. You know, African people use the drums, the uh, how to say, which is made of uh, the skin, uh, the animal skin, yeah. because they had to uh, get rid of the animals from their uh, fields, the agricultural fields. So they had to uh, beat the drums uh, and make some uh, different noises. Uh, such instrument, such instruments were originated from uh, such places, and some uh, places like Europe and the the cold places that would require some air instrument, you know, blowing air so that it would keep you uh, warm. So uh, every instrument has its own uh, 
uh, origin. That was interesting. I see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, uh, our culture and our history, everything is connected. Everything always is connected. Sometimes we don't understand the reason. Sometimes we think that it's just a decoration or something. Mm-hmm. Or, for instance, you know, I, I, I recently read the story. So uh, the door, the door has a knob, right? Knob, the, the thing that we can uh, grab and pull the door. So usually this door, this knob uh, made of special metal. I forgot the name of this method. It's a bronze or something. Usually brass. Brass, uh, right? Yes. And uh, uh, and why it's uh, always brass? I, I brass. I I thought that it's just because of technology or something. But actually, it's not. Actually, it's because uh, it's uh, it's people believe it kills some bacteria. And door knobs. It's the thing that a lot of people touch. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> they try to. They try. They try. They were trying to protect. So there is, there is a, an idea and everything. You know, there is a history or cultural reference we can find. But usually we just don't know about them. Don't know about them. <laughs> yeah, in, in the past we had the opportunities to uh, pass the real reason behind everything. But nowadays the inventions, all the discoveries are numerous. So. We have, do not have so much time to documentize, you know. So we just uh, pass through that. We do not document and we, sh- we do not share that to the next generation. That's how so many beliefs remain just uh, super superstitious, you know. Mm-hmm. We didn't really uh, get the real meaning. Yeah, I, I understand what, what you're talking about. Sometimes we call it a, like a magic, magic mindset, you know, because we don't, un- we, we cannot understand everything because science is very, very huge now. So we, we put some things just on faith. We just believe these things. Why is so? Because it should be so. so. <laughs> magic mindset. Why, why, I don't know, why I need this thing in three times? I don't know. Just we- all- <laughs> we trust that some engineer put some thought into the reason, but we have no idea what that was. <laughs> it just works this way. Okay, don't touch it. It works. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I guess it's uh, all for, for, for our slides. Um, so what do you think about the movie in general? So I, I, I think it's not the best one because it has some... Um, I would say... In, uh, Except one twist, it's pretty straightforward, and you always mm-hmm. know what to expect. No suspense in general, mm-hmm. yeah, and uh, uh, maybe it's my impression, but I, I got it like uh, um, the visual effects, the overall picture wasn't, you know, brilliant. It was pre- pre- pretty pretty low for, for modern requirement, I would say. Yeah, yes, that they made it possible by the editing team, you know. It was, that's why I had hard time to pick a, a stable uh, pixel, <laughs> you know, <laughs> a stable frame. It was really hard. I see, I see. Mm-hmm. So when you, when you did the slide, when you was making the slides, they always was like smooth. A blurring image, yeah. When you pause, <laughs> it's just a blurred image. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Too see. quick editing. Yeah. Did you leave this? There, there actually is a good subplot to this movie that you may miss we have an expression in america your personal demon your own personal demon and what that means is deep inside of everyone there's something that causes them fear or pain or regret and you're you're always kind of haunted by it and in this movie all these heroes they all have their own personal demon Quatermain's demon was that he used to kill animals for fun, for pleasure, and now he feels bad about it. The (laughs) invisible man's demon is, yeah, he's invisible, great, but he can't ever become visible. Uh, Mina Harker's demon is she's pretty and lovely, but her demon is inside she's an evil monster that can kill mercilessly without regret. Dr. Jekyll's demon is Mr. Hyde. He has an ugly side, you know. 
So okay. all of these people have a good side and a bad side. We call that bad side your own personal demon. And you're always trying to control your own personal demon so it doesn't drag you down into depression and despair. Mm -hmm. Wow. Lee, I love this speech. <laughs> yeah. in, in I Russia, just thought I about that. <laughs> I, 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 don't know, I, don't, I don't know why, but we use uh, to name this demon, your personal demon. We, we say it's your skeleton in a closet when you, or in your closet. I don't know why. Yeah, that's, that's usually, in, in English, that's a, an embarrassing secret. But it, yeah, <laughs> different, but... different thing than your personal demon. I see. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for coming. Um, thank you. Nice conversation as always, and see you. We haven't chosen movie yet, mm -hmm. but I will write in in, in, in the chat. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye, teacher Lee. Bye. Bye, bye. bye everyone. Bye, Bola. <laughs> bye.